video is an introduction to the concept of force. So the truth is, students often have quite a difficult time, at least at the beginning, um, with the concept of force. But it gets better, right? Students begin to understand um, the idea of force and its relationship to causing things to move or not, um, it gets better uh, because of experiences, right? Experiences thinking about the issues. So at first, it's going to be very strange, but after a little while, if you pay attention while you're learning your physics, um, these many, many experiences of watching things happen around you are going to help you understand the idea of force. Uh, but this little um, introduction video is going to give you a jumping off point. So let's talk about force. So force is actually something that you can make a measurement of. That is, it's a dimension of measurement referred to as force and it can be measured against units of either pounds or newtons, or there's lots of other units of force. But we're going to, in this class, use the unit called the newton, right? So this is, of course, named after Isaac Newton, and this is the SI unit of force. It's the international system unit. And the reason why this unit is useful is because it is actually composed, it's a composite of other units that you already know. It turns out that one newton of force is equal to one kilogram of mass times one meter per second squared of acceleration. This is the, in a sense, or not a sense, it's actually the definition. So this three, three bar equal sign means definition. It's the definition of the unit called the Newton. So I just described that there is this new thing that you can measure. And in fact, if you've ever gone shopping uh, for vegetables, you may have made your own measurements of force. Or if you ever weighed yourself on a bathroom scale to see how much you weigh, you would have measured in the dimension of force. So likely you've had experiences with this, whether or not you bought five pounds of potatoes or you found out that your weight was a hundred and 30 pounds. But the physics unit that we're going to use in this class is the Newton. And the weight of a person, so I'll write that as W sub P, is usually around 700 Newtons. This is for an adult. So this is how much people weigh. Um, it's about 700 Newtons. So let me talk about what is a force. Like, you know, you, you might have the sense that it's some sort of influence, and you are correct. You can use a force to influence a change on something. And in particular, th this is what a force does. A force is an influence that can cause acceleration. Um, so we know, right, you've been learning that acceleration, what acceleration indicates is that the motion of an object is changing, whether it's changing its speed or the direction of motion or both at the same time. The idea is what causes that change is called force. This is what we define force as. Um, yeah, 
So there are other influences in nature. So for example, um, you can use heating as an influence to make a change of some property of an object. But heating doesn't change motion. It does not cause acceleration. Heating changes temperature, for example, or it melts a solid into a liquid. So heating is not a force influence. Although people, when they just sort of flippantly use physics language, sometimes they make that mistake. They call heat a force, but heat is not a force. In fact, actually, heat is better described as energy. So force is an influence that causes changes to motion. And here are two words that mean just that. If you push or pull on a box, um, you can cause the motion of the box to change. For example, from being at rest to, being, to going into motion. So here's an example. I drew it. It's of a person named Alice and another person named Bob. And Alice and Bob are using forces to try to move a box. So for example, Alice here looks like they are pushing on the box towards the right. And Bob looks like they are pulling on a rope that's attached to the box towards the right as well. And the force by Alice acting on the box is towards the right. Let's say that it's 50 newtons just for um, the sake of having a value. So there's 50 newtons because Alice is pushing on the box towards the right. And let's say Bob is adding another 40 newtons. So what's interesting about forces is the way that individual pushes and pulls, right? Individual forces acting on the box, how do they combine? Well, the way that these two forces, the 50 and the 40 Newton forces by Alice and Bob, the way they combine is they combine up into a 90 Newton force on the box. So we could summarize the action of Alice and Bob on the box. So here is the little box and there is a force, sort of a, a net or a, a total force of say 90 newtons towards the right because of Alice and Bob, right? 50 plus 40 is 90. One of the really, really confusing things um, for students learning about force early on is the fact that some forces can be decided to turn on or turn off. You know, if Bob got tired of pulling on the box, Bob could just relax their muscles and the force on the box, at least due to Bob, would turn off. So this 40 Newton force would drop off to zero. But if Alice keeps pushing, then this, it's not 90 Newtons anymore. It's just 50 Newtons because Bob is taking a break. So humans can decide, make this decision to push or pull. But actually, um, objects which have no sentient kind of decision-making processes, they can also push or pull just because of their structures, just because the two objects simply do not share space. For example, notice that the box is not going to fall through the floor. That is, the floor is going to hold the box up because there's another force on the box, actually, that's pushing it down into the floor, and that's called the weight force. But the floor is pressing upwards on the box to support the box against the weight force, right? Um, so. Often, when we have a push on an object by something like a floor or even a ceiling, we refer to that kind of a force as a support because what it's doing is, in a sense, supporting the weight 
of the object. Um, but weight is actually something of an interesting subject all on its own, so we're going to study that in a different video. But this video was just an introduction to the idea of force, and I hope that you noticed that we have a somewhat detailed diagram where objects are definitely interacting with each other with forces. And from this diagram, we could summarize how the forces are acting on a particular object. And in this case, we only studied the box and the forces on the box. Notice in this diagram, Alice and Bob are not drawn. The floor is not drawn. The fact that there's a weight force still not drawn. Maybe we could add these details into this diagram, but we were just paying attention to the push and the pull by Alice and Bob.